This is a follow-up video from the Stocking Strategies Part 1 and Part 2 videos. If you haven't watched those videos, make sure you do that so you're up to speed. Kit wrote to me and said, Mark, I love the Stocking Strategies videos, and when do I determine the stocking order of the fish on my list? What fish goes in my tank when? That's a great question, Kit. Once your tank is built and you strategize your stocking list, then it's time to strategize the actual stocking order of your tank. First, some saltwater fish are seasonal and they can be on a stock for months before they show up on a stock list or on the diver's den. A lot of fish from the Coral Sea off Australia fit that bill, as when the weather is bad for months on end, like in the Australian winter, collection boats can't reach the Coral Sea. If a fish is seasonal, it's in season, and I know I want it on my tank, I'll go ahead and get the fish, quarantine it, and then hold on to it until its number is called for my tank. Keeping a fish in a separate holding tank has its challenges, so if you've got a sizable refugium, then the fish can hang out there until it's time to go into your tank. Generally, aggressive fish go in last. That way, these guys come into a crowded neighborhood versus having free reign in an empty tank. On the Mega Matrix 120, while the Rollins damsels aren't aggressive, they can get territorial. That's why I'm putting them in the Mega Matrix 120 last, so they have to find their place based on what's left. Sorry guys, you get the scraps. Managing aggression can also be done by bringing fish in in groups, and tangs are a great example. Some tangs don't like other tangs, and they specifically don't like tangs in their own genus. For example, the Acanthorus tang don't like other Acanthorus. The Zebrasoma tangs don't like other Zebrasomas. So if you're going to bring in multiples of this genus, you want to bring them in at the same time. That way they all hit the tank, and the whole tank is new territory, as opposed to one already being there and saying, I'm the boss, who are you? Now some tangs could care less. Naso tangs, they don't care about other tangs. They're not going to bother anything. Pro tip, adding multiple fish to your tank at once can also help spread out the aggression. There are enough new fish that any aggression doesn't have a place to go. This is common in African cichlid tanks. A couple of cichlids in a tank can result in fighting as it's just a few players. Lots of cichlids in a tank means that aggression is so spread out that no one gets picked on. Of course, don't overload your biofilter by adding lots of fish all at once. Leave that for aquarium reality TV shows. Back to the Mega Matrix 120, while I only have one Zebrasoma Tang, the Yellow Tang, I still want him to come into a crowded neighborhood, so he's going to go in towards the end. I'll bring in the white tailed Bristletooth with him just to be safe. Bangai Cardinals, Orchid Dottyback, Midas Blenny, these guys are all peaceful fish that can go on early on. I'm going to cycle the Mega Matrix 120 with the Bacterium Bottle product and the Bangai Cardinals. The Orchid Dottyback and the Midas Blenny will go in a week or two later. Once I've got the initial stocking out of the way, I'm going to give the tank a month to mature. With the increased bio load, the skimmer is going to start working better, biofilms will get established, and I'll start adding in soft and LPS corals. I'll also add in some rubble and sponges from my 450 gallon tank to help boost the biodiversity. Back to the fish list, the Bellis Angel pair are a fish that could care less about other fish, so they're going to go in next along with the Pink Spot Gobi. Then I'll wait a couple of weeks and add in the Magnificent Fox Face. The yellow fin wrasse and yellow assessors will go in at the same time. The point that I hope you're getting here is that I'm spreading out my stocking over the course of weeks and months. I'm going to add some fish, wait a week or two, and then add some more fish. I want to see how the tank reacts before I add in more fish. I'm adding one of my favorite antheas to the Mega Matrix 120 stocking list, the Fathead or Sunburst Antheas, a very colorful fish that hang around the rock work. At this point, the Mega Matrix will be a couple months old, mostly fully stocked, and the biofilter mostly fully established. Therefore, I'm going to add in my high bioload fish. The triggers are going to come in at this point, and when I add them in, I'm going to watch for a nitrate spike. Now, I don't expect to see much of one, maybe one to three parts per million, but I want to keep an eye on that because I know at that point I'm adding in my higher bioload fish. At that point, I'm done, right? Not so much. The boss looked at my stocking list and said, What's a saltwater tank without some clownfish? Point taken, I'm going to add in a pair of captive bred clownfish to the tank as well. And I'm going to wait to add these in towards the end because I want the tank to mature so I can add a sea anemone in with those clownfish. The rule of thumb is to wait three to six months until you add a sea anemone to the tank. There's no science behind that, but I don't think it's a bad idea. So I'll add the clownfish in with this sea anemone later on down the line. So that's it. That's how I strategize the actual stocking order of a saltwater tank. That's how I'm going to strategize the stocking of the Mega Matrix 120. Now, time to find and quarantine those fish. 
I'm Mark Kelly and Mr. Saltwater Tank coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. I'll catch you in the next episode.